Healing is irrational. It's in fact one of the most irrational things you're ever going to undertake in your life. You think healing is going to be logical, but it's not. There is nothing logical or orderly about healing. Why? Because healing requires forgiveness. I think the most important thing, the most important point I can give you to go away with is the five steps to healing because you need to know what to do. Now that I told you where you lose your spirit, what are you going to do about it? First thing you want to know is you have to force yourself to forgive. You are never, ever going to want to do it. So you get, no, no, it's true. So what you need to realize is at some point it's got to occur to you that this is hurting you a lot more than it is them. And that's all there's to it. You will never really want to do it until after you've done it. And that's the funny part about it. You'll never know how precious and how good that feels until after you've done it. That's the first thing. The second thing is you have to redefine healing for yourself. Instead of thinking that healing is perfection, think of healing as a day-to-day -day life journey. It is not reaching a goal where your body is perfect and your mind is perfect and your childhood is perfect and your tomorrow is perfect. Get out of healing as perfection model because that, that's not going to do you any good and it won't work and you'll never get there. So instead, think of healing as an everyday task that you have to live with and redefine it as not perfection, but your capacity to walk every day through the challenges that are in your life. And sometimes if the challenges are an ill body or a, a depressed system, a depressed mental or emotional state, nevertheless, use it as a way to say, I've got to heal today. I'm healing. I'm healing. I'm always healing. And look at it as a continuation. Another thing is stop asking for the reasons why things happen as they do. Give that up. I mean, so many people get to that point and they say, I, I will not at all move forward with this, with this situation in my life until I know why things happen as they do. And you lock your heels in and you clench your jaw and nothing ever moves forward for you at all in your life. And I'm telling you something, that's a dangerous position to be in. It's very dangerous because your spirit does not move on and neither does your life. And you never get anything back and you never do anything else. Chart a course for the future. Chart a course. Make sure, which is the next, the next step in healing, is to chart that course and make sure it is far away from the wound you're using. Okay? See yourself create. Create another, uh, another life path for yourself. Imagine yourself in another direction and literally force yourself to do that, okay? And the last step, which is the same thing I, I witnessed with Chet LaHaye, which is to sit around and have people witness your wound three times. And that's it. Don't go overboard. Don't use anything else. It's three times. Three times and you're done. And, and literally watch yourself, what, watch what happens after that. Don't let yourself slip into passages in which you find yourself needing more and more support. Now remember, certain things will take support, like for example, the death of a child. This is a different category. Right? This is going to take a longer time. But that other level of your life, when you have to have people support you for different types of challenges in your life. Limit yourself. Limit yourself for your, own, for your own sense of strength and say, you know what, I'm going to call people together for three times and I'm going to listen to how much I hurt. And after that, don't expect that you won't hurt, but at least tell yourself, now I've been heard. Now I've been heard. Now I've been witnessed. Now I have to get on with my healing. This is a very powerful way to move your spirit out. Another thing you've got to understand is managing your personal energy system is also a very organized model. You want to stay in present time. 
You want to watch where your energy is. Learn to chart your energy of your body, not just what you want to do with your life. Learn to pay attention to when you're losing your energy to a wound or to yesterday. You can feel it. You can feel it in your biological system. You can feel it when you find yourself getting depressed and you say to yourself, why am I depressed? Look to your history because you might find it goes that way. Look to a relationship, look to some form that's causing you to lose your power because it reminds you of yesterday. Listen to yourself. Listen to the vocabulary you use when you're speaking with other people. Watch how you interact with them. And when somebody says, how are you? Listen to yourself. Do you come out negative first or positive? Do you come out with a sense of wanting to engage them in oh, you poor thing type of dynamic? Or do you come out with this sort of sense of, I'm really OK. I can note, you can have something sad going on in your life and still be OK. All right? You can have something traumatic going on in your life and still be OK. You ha we have more than one reality system available to us. And we have to start thinking about that. And here's the last part. Celebrate your life. Celebrate your life. Instead of spending all a lot of time, and people spend a lot of time, regretting what their life looked like, regretting how they're living, looking at what should have been, could have been, or would have been, begin to take a look at your life from the perspective that this is exactly the way it should have been. I am living the most wonderful life. And if it's not wonderful today, it might be tomorrow. In fact, it will be tomorrow, because all things move in a cycle. And above all, never ever think that anybody on this planet has authority over your future. Because that's not in anybody's hands but yours. And the biggest thing in our hands is what quality do we want our future? What quality do I want our lives? And I know and I deeply believe and I leave you with this thought that one of the greatest ways to ensure a quality tomorrow is by leaving a sad yesterday far behind.